Thing is, I'm not going to say what I'm building, you're going to have to figure it out. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. video I'm gonna make something very interesting very handy this is my own idea I made these before it's gonna be all out of bush material thing is I'm not gonna say what I'm building you're gonna to have to figure it out before the video is over you're all gonna know what I'm building and collect my materials right away here I want a nice straight piece of birch again I'm just using a knife but I'm getting wet Got her. These two I want to leave longer for now. You'll see why later. My nice long pole, it's taller than I am, it's about seven feet. That's the start. Got more stuff to collect. I want some birch bark. see why later. I'm going to collect some of this. This here is nice and flexible, fairly strong. This is uh, red, oisier dogwood. I want a few pieces of this. Like I say, the only item I'm using is a knife to make this uh, thing that's a secret, but you'll all figure it out anyway. Clean these up. I got a couple of different sizes. I know I don't want to go too thin, but then I might not want to be too thick either, so this is great stuff because I can heat it up and bend it in a complete circle, which I have to do. Because we've got a fire ban and I need to bend this wood, I'm going to fill this up with charcoal briquettes so I have a heat source to bend my pieces. We'll get the briquettes going. When they get hot enough, we'll start bending our three pieces we need. Hello! And uh, go from there. Going to need quite a few. While I'm waiting for the briquettes, I just want to clean this up. Actually, I decided I don't need these two things. I had an idea, but I changed my mind. I just want to make this all smooth. Already broke the tip off my knife on another project. I'm very hard on knives and equipment, vehicles, whatever it is. I'll get that all done. We'll start bending our poles. Get these heating up. We'll start bending these. I want a complete circle with the three poles. I have to tie them together with my dog bane. I'll just show you once more how you make the dog bane cordage. Like quick, just a reminder. But this will take time to bend these in a complete circle, the three poles that I want. It's a bit of a project, but it's, you know, these, these kind of projects are just fun. I just really like doing bushcraft items that are handy in a survival situation. And if you're in a survival situation, you get all the time in the world to work on projects, right? So then we're just gonna slowly, without breaking it, keep tension on it. Keep holding it for a while. A little hot on the knee. And eventually when they get hot and start to curve the way I want them, I'll just lean them up against something and then put some weight on it. But yeah, you want to go slow. You don't want to rush it. When I get enough bend in the one spot, then I'll move up to this other section. Okay, I'll keep working on this for quite a while here. So now what I did is I just hooked the three ends in the brick here. I've got 
the middle that's starting to bend nice and I just put a little weight, not too heavy, on this end and I'll just keep moving this back and forth. But you can see how curved they're starting to get already. So now what I did is I put the poles and to keep their shape jammed them under this branch in the general shape that I want before I tie them together. Let them cool down. When I get them tied together I'm going to heat the whole thing up again and then leave it overnight and by tomorrow they'll just hold their shape automatically. I'm ready to uh, tie my pieces together but I have to make uh, some dog bane line or cordage. You know I thought it's such an important skill that for those of you that didn't see how I made it uh, when I made the fishing line a year or two ago maybe it was I'll just go over it again quickly then I'll make my cordage for this I won't uh, drag this out okay so we got our stock we're gonna crush it all the way sometimes it's hard you gotta use two hands sometimes and we can take our thumb just cut it apart. I got two pieces. Sometimes you end up with more. Okay, so now this pith in the middle, it has to go. We're just gonna break it and peel the bark off it. Take all our pith off and now we've got this. And then you're just gonna end up with the bark. <clears throat> and to get your fibers out, wiggle it around and get that bark off. As you wiggle it back and forth, sideways, the bark just falls off and then you're going to end up with your cordage material right here. So what I like to do then before I start is you just you put it on your knee and you just spin it one way and it puts all the fibers tight together and then I end up with a piece that's already strong. I'm twisting towards the camera but I twist away from myself until it forms this little loop like that, then I pinch the loop, and then basically, I've got two sides here, I twist away from myself, wrap, twist away from myself, wrap, away, wrap, and you just keep pinching it as you twist, and this makes it uh, like five times stronger than just the ordinary fibers, then you're going to get nice piece of cordage. I always have dog bane cordage. I've got lots for this project. I sit around camp and every second or third night I'll make up three or four feet of it. So I always have it handy. It's not like I have to make it. I have plenty for this project. But like I say I want this to be strictly bush materials for this project. But I'm going to show you how strong this stuff is. Make great guitar string too. Bow drill strings, whatever. This stuff is good. Okay, I'm going to try to break this by hand. Wrap it. Okay. Ooh, can't be done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flatten out a spot on each one of these. They're not quite the shape I want yet, but I can uh, just keep heating them. I want to get them together, tied together, and then I can just rework it like that. It's going to attach to this one. I don't have enough bend yet. So on this one I'll carve the other side. The inside on this one. I really, I really like these bush craft projects where you just come up with an idea and you make it work. I've done this before, but I've never shown it on video. That's the fun I'm having is just showing you how to make what I'm making. I almost gave it away for those uh, who may not have guessed yet. I don't know if anybody's guessed yet what I'm making. I left these uh, to bend. I'm just going to tie them up, just wrap it three or four times. 
Okay, this might take some time, so maybe I'll just tie it together and then show you. Forgot that where my joints are, I wrapped it tight with the birch bark, which is like wrapping it with electrical tape. It'll hold the joint better than just tying it with my dog bean. Get all three of my joints wrapped with birch bark and tied. See, now that the sticks have been heated, and bent in a circle like this. The birch bark itself is holding. The dog bane is just a backup to hold it all together. So we'll get all three of these joints done up. Dog bane line, I was just using it here. No, it's the same color as the grass and I can't seem to find it. I just cut it off and put it down here somewhere. Oh, there it is, over there. Didn't quite put it where I thought. Okay, so I've got my joints, got my circle. Has anyone guessed yet what I'm making? A bushcraft hula hoop. Oh, I got hung up on this stick. No, that's not what I'm making. Now I've got my pole. I'm going to sharpen this end. And then I'm going to cut some grooves with my saw in this end. The only problem I seem to have is I don't really have enough dog bean cordage for the project so although it could completely be made from bush material I'm going to improvise and use some paracord to finish the project because it just takes so much time to make the cordage and I thought I had more than I I did have so I've used it basically up except for maybe a foot of it now so I need some longer lengths so I'm going to improvise and use paracord. This whole project can be done with paracord as well. I don't know if anybody's guessed what I'm making yet. Leave your comments below, but I mean if you watch the whole video you'll know by now, probably, or maybe not yet. I need a couple more poles here. That should do it. Put a notch to fit over my loop. Tie that on. I gotta tie two of these on. Kind of near the center is what I want. I'll tie one end and then pull it together. I can pull it an inch or so. Okay, let's get that tied on. Okay, I got my two poles cut in between. Now I'm going to take two little blocks in the middle here. But I want to allow enough room for this to slide through but be fairly tight. That's what I want. I'll put two, two of these on. This time I'm going to measure and try to get it in the center. So my first block will go here, second one here but allow enough room. Okay, I got those tied, and I left just enough room for this. Not a lot of room, but just enough. You'll see why. You can see that I would have needed a lot more dog bean cordage. I should have just kept making some, but I've been really busy doing videos, so it's tough to find time for every project. But this one I want to get finished, because I'm heading to Maine to see Zach in a, just like four days here. Now I want to allow about a foot between the string and here so that's about right. Okay, good enough. Figure out my foot again and then I'm going to take another string and I'm going to crisscross it to that side to this side. Right about there. Okay, I'm going to tie these together so I know where I want them. 
of staying straight. That's what I want. Okay, I just uh, put my pole through, put my strings in the grooves that I cut earlier, as you remember. It's all straight. I got it stuck in the ground for now. Anybody guessing yet? By the next procedure, you're going to guess. So at this point, it's probably a giveaway. You probably figured out what I'm making at this point. So, but we're just going to get it done. I'm going to collect some of these good old skunk cabbage leaves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie four at a time together. First one here, overlap them, keep the stalks to each other, four at a time kind of in a fan shape like this and then I'll tie these together and I'll make about uh, might take four or five bundles I've got enough here to cover probably half um, I left the lines long on both sides where I tied it and then I can tie them together and just make a complete circle. So I'm just going to tie all these stalks together, get half done, and then make the other half. Get these up on here. I'm just going to push this in. Now the weight is going to move it. Because they're overlapped, I just want to get them kind of where I want them here. Ooh, this side looks really good. I know you figured it out. A bushcraft umbrella for foraging. Now if I'm out foraging in the rain, picking berries in the rain, I can pack it with me. If I got a berry bush I want to pick berries on, stick it in the ground and pick my berries and just move to the next bush. Cover my last half here. You gotta stabilize this. It's uh moving around on me. Spread it where I need it. There we go. Well that should stay. Voila. This will work awesome. This will work awesome for foraging berry picking. There you go. My bushcraft umbrella. Right on. Hey Finn, I got my umbrella. Well, I'm done this little bush project. It uh, took a little while because I I uh, couldn't get it quite finished before I went to Vancouver Island, but. Uh, I caught a lot of salmon down there. Thanks for watching the uh, blackberry pie video. Thanks for watching all the videos. This thing is awesome. It took a little bit of time because you're trying to do video and uh, always takes longer. I'm happy with the build. Thanks for watching all you viewers. Thank you subscribers. Thanks for all your great comments. Stay tuned for another episode of um, the fireside chat. There will be one coming up uh, next month. I'm going to try to keep them at four weeks apart. I've got a good one coming up, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching the Bush Umbrella. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, so one more thing that I would mention too is although I use skunk cabbage because it's just such a good shingle material that it's unbelievable for shelters or the umbrella like you saw you could use like cedar boughs or spruce boughs or other material as well so keep that in mind 
try it out. Try to make one and uh, maybe with different materials. Right on. We'll see you on the next one.